Sculptor Gutson Borglum carved more than individuals into stone. Mount Rushmore was intended to commemorate American culture and ideals, a monument to democracy itself. Thus he chose four presidents he believed best embodied the spirit of America and represented the first 150 years of American history. These presidents were George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. Washington was a natural and uncontested first choice, and carving began in late 1927. As the father of the new country, he laid the foundation of American democracy and is the most prominently featured on the mountain. On sculpting Washington, Borglum said, I deliberately carved the head in an upright position without the slightest tilting forward or backward or to either side, to fix upon the mind of the observer the upright character of the man. But I found the figure was too still. I merely pivoted the body by cutting the left shoulder further back into the mountain. It had the same effect as if the head itself had been turned. It has put more life into the figure. Borglum's monument, a shrine of democracy, has and will continue to serve as a lasting testament to the founding, growth, preservation, and development of the American nation. Jefferson is well known as the primary author of the Declaration of Independence, a document critical to American democracy and an inspiration for other democracies around the world. This in itself was a great accomplishment. However, Borglum chose him not just because of this, but because of the Louisiana Purchase. Jefferson dreamt of westward expansion and his land deal more than doubled the size of our country. Borglum's vision originally placed Thomas Jefferson on Washington's right. However, because of poor quality stone, the sculpture had to be revised. After months of hard work and many dollars later, the first attempt was blasted away in 1934 before carving began again. Once again, Borglum ran into problems partway through carving in the new position. A major crack was revealed running through Jefferson's nose, and the head had to be reset 5 degrees to the north, set back 4 feet, and tilted roughly 18 inches to its present-day position. With all of the setbacks, it took six years from the beginning of carving in 1930 to its dedication in 1936, the longest time period between initial carving and dedication for any of the four presidents. At what age should Jefferson's figure be immortalized, young or old? Borglum eventually decided to portray a younger Jefferson at the age of 33 when he had drafted the Declaration of Independence. Despite the many challenges Borglum faced while carving, Jefferson's figure now looks eternally heavenward as part of one of America's enduring icons. Perhaps the most contested presidential figure to appear on Mount Rushmore is Theodore Roosevelt. Many believed him too recent a president to be commemorated in such a permanent manner. Early models didn't include Roosevelt, only Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln. However, the vision was always evolving, and measurements of the mountain showed that there would be room for one more figure. Borglum was a personal friend of Roosevelt and saw the opening of the Panama Canal as an important development that allowed easier travel and trade access to the West. Senator Peter Norbeck, an instrumental individual in the success of Mount Rushmore, was also enthusiastic about the inclusion of Roosevelt. 
but it may have been President Calvin Coolidge's strong belief that Roosevelt should be recognized for being the first president to protect the rights of the working man that ultimately contributed to Borglum's final decision. Roosevelt's iconic mustache measures approximately 20 feet across, and Borglum, ever attentive to detail, purposely left it with a rough texture, characteristic of the president's rugged American spirit and individuality. On carving Roosevelt, Borglum is quoted as saying, Tell them I'm making Roosevelt's glasses out of the most precious thing on earth, imagination. And so today, Roosevelt's image stands carved high into the mountain, part of the ultimate monument to American ideals. Lincoln oversaw one of the most pivotal periods of the United States, the Civil War. His strength and determination held the Union together during one of America's most trying times. Borglum wrote on the selection of Lincoln, Lincoln, because it was Lincoln and no other than Lincoln, whose mind, heart, and finally life determined that we should continue as a common family of states and in Union forever. Borglum had long admired and respected Lincoln, and the sculpture at Mount Rushmore was not Borglum's first of the president. He also sculpted the marble bust of Lincoln at the U.S. Capitol and the seated Lincoln in Newark, New Jersey. One of the dilemmas Borglum faced was whether or not to carve Lincoln clean-shaven or with a beard. Eventually, he decided to portray Lincoln with the beard he had while president. Borglum was a master sculptor, and incredible attention to detail contributed to the lifelike portrayals of each president. Borglum paid special attention to the eyes of each sculpture. Each eye spans approximately 11 feet. A shaft of protruding granite approximately 20 inches long serves as the pupil. The smooth front surface of the shaft reflects light, and the concave depressions create shadows that add depth. In Mount Rushmore, the story behind the scenery, Borglum's son states, Many observers have remarked that the compassionate face of Lincoln is the most skillfully carved of the four faces on Mount Rushmore. If this is true, it is no doubt because of my father's great reverence and love for Lincoln, his favorite subject. <laughs>